Finding and recognizing objects in the night sky is not as easy as it perhaps sounds. One needs to understand how the objects move in order to be able to find them more easily. In my book, Astronomy Within Reach, published in June of 2012, I do address these issues in the section on star charts where I talk about angles in the sky, I talk about fields of view and orientating a star map. Now this situation applies particularly to the Southern Cross which although it is a well-known constellation is not always easily found. So Star Waders has developed a model which shows the motion of the Southern Cross. And we prepare the model by inserting the shaft. Right, so here we have the Southern Cross. There's its long arm, there is its short arm, and there are two pointers to it. They are known as Alpha and Beta Centauri, very bright objects and very easy to see. And here in the Southern Cross, we have a special little identifier over there, the fifth star of the Southern Cross, because there are many cross-shaped objects in the sky, and besides the pointers, that one helps to identify the Southern Cross. So what we've got to imagine is that we are actually in a situation where we are outside in the night sky, and we are looking in the southerly direction, where in the sky we can actually see the real Southern Cross. So the first thing we do is we try and orientate this model so that this Southern Cross is orientated in the same way as the real Southern Cross. The shaft of the model is aligned more or less to the Earth's axis. This ensures that the motion that we see here will be the same as the real motion in the sky. So let's assume that you have learnt to how to find the Southern Cross and shown how to recognize it when it is in this orientation. So you would be expecting to see the two pointers more or less being below it and you'd be expecting to see the cross pointing down to your right and lower down. So what we've got to realize now is that this is what the Southern Cross does. And if you happen to be outside at a time like this, when the Southern Cross is orientated like this, you would have great difficulty finding it because you are expecting to see the pointers more or less below it. Instead of it looking to the bottom right as it was, now it's looking towards the bottom left. So without understanding and without expecting this sort of motion, you would really battle to find it. Now what causes that motion is that it is the Earth that is rotating from west to east and that is what actually makes it look as if the stars and the Southern Cross are moving around a central point. So let's see how quickly that this Southern Cross moves. We realize that it's actually once a day that it takes to do a complete revolution but if that's the case then let's say that this was six o'clock in the evening that would be midnight. That would be early the next morning. That would be midday and that would once again be six o'clock in the evening. So you can quite easily see there that the Southern Cross changes its orientation fairly quickly during the course of a night and that it may be difficult to recognize. Now it is not only during the course of a night that we see movement of the Southern Cross or rather that we see it being in different positions. If we looked at the Southern Cross every evening at 8 o'clock, let's say on the first evening we looked and it was in this orientation and then we looked at it every night again at 8 o'clock in the evening, we would see it in a slightly different position every night at 8 o'clock. And during the course of a year, it would, at 8 o'clock in the evening, also scribe the same revolution that it did on a daily basis. Right, so understanding how the Southern Cross moves will help you to be able to find the Southern Cross no matter in what orientation it is.